Between the flashing glow of motel signs to the allure of the spinning Sputnik, it's hard to know where to start at the American Sign Museum, but founder Tom Swarmstead is happy to help. His love of signs isn't just a hobby, it's a legacy. For over a century, his family has owned Sign of the Times, a trade journal for the sign industry. In 2005, he used that expertise to create the first public sign museum in the country. Right now, the collection is probably about 4,200 objects. Uh, we're always acquiring more, so I don't know what the exact count is at, of this moment. To break that down, we have a little over 600 signs. What I'm really uh, trying to do is to create a respect in the public for the craft of sign making and for the design. Signs have made quite an impact on the landscape. And when the public is out driving around and they see signs, it doesn't really register in their mind the importance of signs and the contribution that they've made to the landscape. So as new technologies evolve, each small business would want to one-up their neighbor to have a sign that a person going down the street would see first. For many small businesses, signs functioned as their only source of advertising. The competition to be seen advanced the industry, from the earliest trade signs of the 1800s to the three periods of electric signs, light bulbs, neon, and plastic. One way you can walk through the museum is to do a history of design trends. I can actually track Art Nouveau, Art Deco, what I call the funky 50s, in, into the modern look of the 60s. You could also walk through the museum from the standpoint of the history of technology. When you walk through the museum, it's obvious that you're walking through the history of signs. But what you're really doing is taking a walk through the history of America as seen through the history of signs. And we have a number of pieces that actually are from an important point along the timeline of American history. We actually have a gilded piece which has the Pledge of Allegiance. Now that's missing the phrase, under God. For those that know their American history, that under God phrase was added in 1953 during the McCarthy era. So I know that piece, that Pledge of Allegiance, was done before 1953. What the public really wants to, wants to see are some of those American icons. Um, for example, our 1963 Speedy McDonald sign. Here we've actually built a complete main street with period storefronts. Each storefront is designed around the sign we have. We have a late 40s corner bar. Each storefront features signs from that era. And then finally, the windows of the storefronts become our display cases. And each window's got a theme. For example, that hardware store I talked about, the theme for its windows is neon clocks and neon salesman samples. And it's here that visitors start to see the true extent of the museum's collection. Anything related to sign making or sign design can be found on display from tools and equipment to photos and blueprints. Most people's expectation when they hear a sign museum, what comes to mind to them is a barn with a bunch of rusty old signs. We actually try to teach them about the value of signs. We try to educate them about technology, how signs have changed. And it really is, uh, like I said before, a walk down memory lane. And the thing about the memories is it's always good memories. Like that first kiss at a drive-in, or that, that diner where you ate with grandma and grandpa, these are always good memories. And that's something that's hard to capture these days. As far as what the museum means to me, I've told people I have the best job in the sign industry. This is what I wanted to do. It's a very rewarding thing for me. When people come to the museum and their eyes light up and they start remembering these signs, that's what really makes my day.